So the next planet, which is the planet closest to the Sun, it's, it's really close to the Sun, it orbits the Sun uh, once every 88 days, but seen from the Earth it does some pretty strange things because uh, you're on, uh, we're on a moving planet and in relation to the Sun and Mercury, um, Mercury appears to loop in the sky and it'll do that three times in the year and there's times when it seems to be going backwards and uh, in compared to the normal direction uh, and there's a retrograde periods which um, are quite significant and we'll probably deal with that later. But Mercury is like the it's it's the whole way we perceive the universe and life. Mercury is our thoughts Mercury is the way we interpret input, Mercury is speaking, Mercury is hearing, Mercury is understanding, it's listening. Um, so it's everything to do with communication, education and travel. And Mercury will show how good we are at this, how good we are and what is the way we communicate. So for example, Mercury in Pisces, uh, which is this dreamy sign, is going to uh, communicate in a rather vague and wishy-washy way perhaps. <sighs> Uh, because there's just so many dreams to express. Whereas Mercury in Capricorn, very businesslike, makes lists and uh, very organized with his thoughts. Um, so looking at uh, Mercury, we've got this uh, newspapers, uh, th think thought bubbles, uh, all this inner dialogue that's going on in our mind, um, uh, writing, reading, this is all connected with Mercury. So this, our hands are also connected with Mercury and this connection, the connection of the nerves from our you know, eyes to our brain to our fingertips to writing, it's quite a magical thing to be able to do, isn't it? To be able to write once upon a time. That's Mercury completely at work there. And Mercury is also like a, our siblings. Uh, if we don't have siblings, it's also like our friends or going to school and our schoolmates. It's the people of us, our own age really, who, who are affecting us. So our, our brothers and sisters are the people who, 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 who are constantly interacting with us, verbally and non-verbally. And uh, uh, do, so Mercury will, will, will often say, uh, indicate just how our, our brothers and sisters have been and what kind of effect they have on us. For example, a, a woman with um, three brothers uh, is probably going to have a Mercury in aspect of a masculine planet like Mars, uh, and, and she's probably going to have to fight to be heard, uh, and all this would be visible in the horoscope. And Mercury is this whole network of communication around us, uh, particularly like bicycles, and uh, uh, but you know, the telephone and uh, any way where we connect with people, it's an expression of Mercury. Venus is, um, people would say, that Venus is the planet of love, I think. Um, it's a very, very beautiful planet and actually um, uh, it does an amazing thing seen from the Earth. If you uh, follow the motion of Venus in relation to the Sun and the Earth over a period of eight years, it describes, uh, if you sort of made a time-lapse photo, it describes a five-pointed flower and it will constantly imprint that. It happens at the same degrees, for the same five different degrees, uh, and it will constantly imprint that flower on the solar system, on our consciousness, on the universe. Uh, so there's this something amazingly harmonious and magical about Venus. And uh, in us, it, it reflects uh, our way of judging things. It, we all think different things are beautiful. And we're all attracted by, by different kinds of things. And what we're attracted by is, uh, is shown by Venus in the sign uh, and different aspects to Venus in, in the horoscope. So, for example, if you are uh, a woman with Venus in Aries, you'd be attracted to a very independent man. Or if you're a man with Venus in Aries, would be attracted to a masculine and independent woman. But if you had Venus in Taurus, You'd be attracted to some like uh, more sens sensuous and uh, quiet type, uh, and uh, enjoy somebody who enjoys life. So Venus shows this kind of natural attraction. Uh, you could sort of imagine it as a, a uh, it's like the magnetic field around us, and each person has 
a different ma magnetic field like according to how Venus is. So when two people like each other, it's like their Venuses harmonize uh, and, and there's a sort of magnetic field. And there's not, you can't decide to like somebody or decide not to like somebody. It's a sort of a, a natural magnetism between people. And uh, Venus is like the flower. Uh, one, so much beauty in Venus. It's so much. You, nobody can. Nobody can discuss whether a flower is beautiful or not. It's not something connected with the rational mind. Venus is is something that touches our soul. It's a natural harmony between nature and our own soul. Uh, and Venus uh, and a flower is like a perfect expression of Venus. And that's why we will give flowers. Uh, um, to those we love, uh, and not to those we don't love, say. And this is a picture of Venus, actually, by Botticelli, and uh, it's a very, very good uh, visual depiction of, of, of Venus, I think. Uh, uh, Venus does just simply represent what is naturally beautiful. And Venus is love. Uh, Venus has this uh, eight-year resonance, so every when you're 16, you know, this is the time when you, you'll almost certainly have your first experience of love as you enter puberty. And uh, it's a very, very beautiful thing. But it's also, uh, Venus is, is, is like very much connected with am I liked or am I not liked? So it's a very, very sensitive time um, uh, around the age of 15, 16, um, uh, in, in connection with the early formative relationships that you have. Now Mars is uh, quite a different kettle of fish, but Mars and Venus are amazingly connected. Uh, if you want to see the difference between Mars and Venus, imagine a, a man going into a, sh a perfume shop or a beauty parlour. I mean, he has no idea what all these amazing variety of perfumes and bottles and nail polish and everything. I mean, it's a, it's a, a total mystery to the male. Just as much as when the, a, a woman goes into a, a hardware store and sees uh, power tools and spanners and hammers and, and that sort of thing, which a man loves and wants to buy, uh, that is so totally foreign to the woman. And it's a funny thing, but there's that much, uh, the equal amount of money spent on the beauty industry, Venus, as the weapon industry, Mars. So Mars is this... Um, very masculine force and is connected to our sexuality and you can see in the horoscope what sort of sexuality one is attracted to and how one expresses with it, how spontaneous you are with it uh, and in a woman's horoscope uh, uh, Mars really shows the kind of men uh, the woman's interested in. So uh, for example Mars in Capricorn the woman would be interested in an ambitious man just as Venus in a man's horoscope shows what the man's interested in. So uh, Venus in Leo, for example, the man would want a woman he could be proud of. So uh, Mars is connected with everything to do with the, 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 the challenges or the battles that we have in life and how to win those battles. Mars is about winning uh, and not about fine feelings or anything like that. So all the competitive situations that arise, which would definitely arise with brothers and also in trying to emulate the father, uh, but also with school kids, etc. Uh, the kind of uh, success and failure rate uh, in these competitive situations is very related to Mars. And Mars is passion, you see, where, where Venus could be say, said to be love, Mars is definitely uh, uh, sort of more like passion. Um, in other words, it's like um, it's it's when the sexual drive uh, t starts to take over, and it, it's very compelling, and very difficult to resist. And here's a guy who's winning, um, and he's an army guy. You know, Mars is definitely sort of army uh, like, uh, a war like in a sense. So uh, this is a guy winning a marathon, and uh, that sense of victory is definitely connected with Mars. Mars is also connected with steel. Uh, every planet actually has a, 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 
an element, uh, metal, connected with it. Venus is copper, Mercury is mercury, and Mars is steel or iron. So this is the picture of, a, of our ironworks. It's hot, it's red, uh, it's dangerous. That's Mars. And Mars is the warrior. Uh, of course, it could be any kind of warrior. It could be somebody who, who um, uh, fights for social justice. Uh, but a, a typical Mars person would be uh, a marine with um, uh, uh, a machine gun. And uh, it doesn't have to be like that, but here's an example of the list. 